Hey, what's up my fellow makers? April Dunham here. So if you've watched any of my videos, and you probably know that one of the things I'm really passionate about is integrating Power Apps within Microsoft Teams. So I was really happy to see that a lot of you all are starting to integrate your Power Apps inside of Teams, and you've been asking me, how can we have deep linking to our Power Apps that are embedded in Teams? If you don't know what deep linking is, it's just a way to format a hyperlink that will take you to a specific spot in an application or a web page. And if you want a really detailed overview of deep linking and how that works within Power Apps, I do have another video that goes over that as a whole, which I'll drop a link to here in the video notes. But the whole deep linking process is a little bit different when you're using your Power Apps and Teams. So what I'm going to cover today in this video is how you can create and use deep links to your Power Apps that are embedded in Teams, either as a tab or as a pinned application in the left rail. But first, here's the intro. I'll start out by showing you a scenario for deep linking, and then we'll see how we can actually make that work. The first scenario I'm going to cover is if you want to have deep links in a Power App that you've pinned to the left rail. Now, in this case, I have a Power App called the Training Portal application that I have pinned to the left rail, and I've deployed this as what's called a tenant application. So I've utilized an app setup policy within Teams to make this be pinned to the rail for all of my users. And if you want to know more about how to do this, I do have a video that I'll include a link to, which shows you how to embed a Power App as a Teams app in this way. But what we want to do here is in this app, I'm able to add new training. So if I go to the new screen, I have this form and I can put a link to a new training video. So I'll come here to my friend Daniel Laskowitz's channel and maybe I want to show the video about Power Platform PowerShell that he has. So I'm going to click to share and I'll copy this video. And I'll go back into Teams, put in a title, and put in the video URL. So what's going to happen from the end user perspective, so I'm going to save this, and I have a Teams team for training. So if I click on the Teams tab, we see we have a training team with a general channel. And in this general channel, if I go to the post, what's happening behind the scenes is it's putting an announcement out here to all the members of this training team that there's a new training added for Power Platform PowerShell and it's giving them a link to view the course. So I want all of this to happen within the Power App that I have embedded so they can go directly to a page to see that course. So when they click this, this is using that what we call deep linking functionality to pass in a link that will take them directly to a specific screen within this Power App embedded in Teams. So let's click this. We see it's opened up this Power App on the left rail and look what it did. So rather than having that landing screen that we just saw, it's taking me directly to this course and I can play and watch the video in my application. The way to accomplish this deep linking is different if you're using your application pinned to the left rail versus if you're using your application as a Teams tab. Well, I have this particular sample also working for a Teams tab. So if we go into Teams, you'll see on that general channel of this training team, I have this same application added here as a tab. So if I wanted to have this deep linking concept open up within this tab instead, we can accomplish that also. So I can go in, add a training, and for this, let's check out John Levesque's channel, and we'll take out one of his training videos, his tech channel, uh, Power Virtual Agents. That looks pretty cool. So we'll copy this link, go back to our application, click Save. And now if we go back to that Post tab here, we see that it added that. But if we click on this link this time, it's not taking us to the pinned app, it's actually taking us here to the tabbed application and directly to that screen. So this is all one Power Apps application, but it's letting us do deep linking no matter which way we're using this within Teams. Yay! Now that you see what this can do and have a better understanding of what I mean about deep linking, let's see how to actually make this happen. I'm gonna open up our training portal application in the edit mode. And a lot of this is gonna happen here in your app on start. There's a few things that we're going to need to do here. When you embed an app in Teams, we're able to pass context from Teams into our Power App. And there's some great documentation out there on docs.microsoft.com that lets you know exactly what context variables that are supported right now in Teams to pass to Power Apps and some examples of how to do that. 
So for this deep linking scenario, the main context variables that we're going to be concerned with are this channel ID, group ID, and sub entity ID. So in order to get a parameter value in Power Apps, there's a function called param. But what I'm doing is I'm setting three different global variables, one called var group ID, and I'm using that param function, and I'm using the group ID context variable that we saw in the documentation to get the group ID that this Power App is in. I'm setting another one for var channel ID, and I'm using the parameter of the channel ID so I can see what channel the Power App is embedded in. Now the next thing you see I'm doing here in the formula bar is I need to be able to determine since this one app could possibly be used pinned in the left rail or as a tab, I need to tell is this a tab or is it a pinned application? So to do that, I'm going to key off of this channel ID because an application that's pinned in the left rail isn't going to be associated with a particular channel. And so to figure this out, I just did some testing where I output it in a label this var channel ID value, and I look to see what it is when the Power App is actually in a channel and what it is when it's not, when it's pinned. And I notice that when it's pinned, it just returns in brackets channel ID. But when it's not, you actually get the GUID of the channel ID that it's in. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm saying if var channel ID equals this brackets channel ID, I know in that case that this is a pinned application, not a tab. So what I'm doing from this point is I'm setting another global variable called var app context. And in this case, I'm going to set it to pinned. But if there is a channel ID, I'm going to set that to tab. And this is important when it comes to the end of the process where I'm posting that link to open the item because the URLs that we need to format are different. So we'll see how we use this later on. And then the last parameter that I need to utilize and do is the var item and I'm getting that parameter from that sub entity ID. This is the magic of actually getting and passing the parameters. In this particular application to pull that data about the selected item, I need to look up to my SharePoint list. So after I have that sub entity ID, I wanna to check to make sure it's not blank, and then I'm going to look up to my training list and map on that ID with that parameter value and get and set a variable called selected course. And finally, if that is not blank and there is a parameter being passed, that means I should go directly to my training details screen, which has all of the information about that selected course. So hopefully this makes sense so far. Now that we have all that, let's go to the new training page because this is where we're actually going to add a new training and there's some logic behind the scenes that is going to automatically post a message to the channel with the link to view the course. So what's happening here is I have a save button. And if we expand out the on select property of the save button, you see that we have a lot of stuff going on. So the first thing I'm doing, this is just a form control on the screen. So I'm just submitting that to save that record to my SharePoint list. Next thing, this is where we're using that var app context where we were deciding if this was a pinned application or embedded as a tab. So if that app context equals pinned, I need to post the message with a different URL versus if it's a tab. So that's what this if statement's doing. To post that message, we need to go into our data sources by clicking the cylinder and do a search for Microsoft Teams and add this Teams connector. And with the Teams connector, we have an action called post message to channel v3 i always try to use the latest one you'll see that there's a post message to channel and then a v2 and then also a v3 so i'm using the v3 here since that's the latest one and if we look at the formula bar we'll see that this particular action expects three main things you need to pass it in the group id of the team the channel id of the team and the body of the message if this is a pinned application i'm just going to hard code the group id and the channel ID of the team that I wanna post this message to. And let me show you how I got that. If we go back to Teams, I know that I wanna post that here in the general channel of my training team. In order to figure out that information, if you click in the upper right-hand corner on these three dots, you'll see an option for get link to channel. So I'm going to copy this, and we need to inspect that URL a bit to get this information. So I'm going to go into VS Code so we can look at this further and paste that link in. 
So with this URL, we have some query string parameters. So one, we can see the group ID. So this is what we need to copy into our Power App here. So we'll just copy this group ID and we'll go back to the Power App. And you'll see that's what I have pasted in here to map for the group ID. The other thing we need is the channel ID. So you see in this URL, we have WAC channel, and then we have this big long GUID. Now the only thing that we need to change here is we want all of this information, but you'll see that after the 19, there's a percent %3a. This is a special encoding that represents a colon. So what we we'll want to do is replace this percent %3a with a colon. And the other thing we need to do is replace this percent %40 because that's another encoding that represents the at symbol. So let's remove that and replace that with an at. So now we want to copy everything between the forward slash after channel and the forward slash before general. So you'll copy that once you formatted that and paste that in here on the channel ID property. Now we need to format the body of the message. This is where I got a little tripped up at first when working with this post message because the IntelliSense wasn't really telling me at first what it expected. It seemed like it would just be a text value and I was getting an error that this expected a record. So then I realized that we need to put in some brackets here. So an open and a closing squarely bracket, and it needs two different properties. So it needs the content itself of the message. And then it also needs a content type. So you can tell it that this is HTML that you're passing in. So you'll do a content and then a colon, and this is where you'll put the message that's gonna be posted. And then you'll do a comma and you'll have content type colon, and you'll put in HTML there. So what I did here is I've just did an H1 tag. I manually typed in new training added and I'm passing in data from my form submission. So I'm getting that form new training, the last submission of that and the title. Then you'll see I have an A tag, which is a way to do hyperlinks in HTML. And this is where we're gonna put in our deep link. Let's talk about how we get this. So I'm gonna go back to Visual Studio Code so we can look at this a little bit clearer. This is the format that you're going to need to use if you want to deep link into a Power App that's been added as a pinned application in Teams in the left rail. So you can copy all of this. So teams.microsoft.com, WACL, WAC entity, and then you need to pass in the app ID of your Power App twice. So now let's go see how we get that app ID. So go to Power Apps and you'll find the application that you're wanting to embed as a Teams app. So in this case, it's training portal. And we're gonna click on these three dots and go to details. And you'll find the application ID right here. So there's an app ID property. You're going to copy that and you're just gonna replace where that says app ID there two times with your application ID. So that will take you to the app itself. Now, how do we pass in a parameter? Well, if we go back to the Power App example, you see we have a bunch of stuff after the app ID in this URL. So what I'm gonna do is copy this so we can look at it a little bit better. So let's just paste that in there. So what we're going to do is after our last app ID in here, we're going to add a question mark because that's how you define a query string parameter. We're gonna type in context equals and you need all this stuff. So what you can really do is I'll put this in the video notes so you can just copy and paste this into your app. But what you're gonna do is come in after this. So after all of this, sub entity ID, that was that property I was just talking about that allows us to pass parameters. And right after all this percent %22, this is where you can dynamically pull in, in my case, the ID of the object that we want to display in the Power App. So if we go back to Power Apps, you'll see that's where I'm adding an ampersand so I can pull in some dynamic data. And I'm pointing that to my form, last submit ID. So I'm gonna pass in a query string, the sub entity ID of the ID of the last submission. And then all we need to do, let's copy this and go back. So I'll just hard code like an ID of 50 there, is add after whatever that dynamic property you're passing in, is add this percent %22, percent %70. So kind of a complex, wacky URL that you have to format there, but this is going to enable you to pass a deep link. Hopefully our head's not spinning yet from all the crazy URLs, but we have one more to go. So that's how you do that to make it pass a deep link here in the left rail. Now let's take a look at the opposite end to pass a deep link into a tab. So let's see how I got to that URL. So if we go and look, so I've already added this training portal app as a tab. The way to get the URL you need for this is when you go to your tab, you'll see three dots on the upper right hand side and you'll have an option for a copy link to tab. If you click that, and paste it into a text editor, we can inspect what's going on here. 
So if we know we want our deep link to always go to that tab in the training team, we can just use this URL and replace one thing. Now, if you're looking at this, you should notice and spot right off the bat that this URL has sub entity ID in it. That was the thing we talked about that allows us to pass parameters. And if you look past the percent 22 and all these encoding, you'll see that there's a big null right in there. That's where you're able to pass in your query string parameter. So what we're going to do is just replace that null and that's where we can insert whatever query string parameter value we're wanting to pass in. So you'll just copy this big long URL, go back to your Power App and paste it in here in the content of your post message to channel. And you'll see the only thing I did, there's the sub entity ID and I'm passing in the ID of our last submission of this new training form. And I'm just doing a reset of the form and we're navigating back to the landing page after we add that. And the last little quick thing that I'll show you here is how I'm using those var group ID and var channel ID variables. So you might have this application embedded as a tab in multiple Teams channels. That's where this would come into play. So rather than hard coding the group ID and the channel ID, you can use those variables that we got in the app on start that we looked at earlier, pass those in, and we could even take this further and pass those variables in here where you see the channel ID property of the URL and the group ID so that those are dynamically set also. So no matter what tab you have this app embedded in, these properties will be dynamically passed in. So that's all there is for the behind the scenes logic that you have to configure to get this working for both methods. And we've already seen how it all comes together where I can go and add a new video training and having it posted here and it will go and open that deep link when we click on the course. I think this deep linking capability is really going to go a long way to making your Teams-based Power Apps more user-friendly and intuitive. This is just one use case that I showed. Imagine if you're using adaptive cards for approvals and posting those into Teams, and you wanted to have a link directly to the item that they're approving in the Power App that's embedded within Teams, that's a good use case for this. Drop me a note in the comments if you find a good use case for this in some of your applications. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you in the next video.